I will pick the best and leave the rest. Speak garbage in, garbage out. I often talk about the intertwined nature of mind, money management, and methodology, three M's, and how you can't separate them out. If you become better at your methodology, your mindset is going to improve. You'll build confidence in your methodology. And then guess what? When you have the unavoidable losing trades, provided, of course, they hit your stop, you'll be more inclined to kick the stinkers out of your portfolio because you'll recognize that they aren't winning and you'll recognize that they aren't winners and don't have those characteristics and you'll be more inclined to kick them out. The dichotomy between a winner and a loser will be more and more obvious. So how do you pick the best and leave the rest? That's another one of those cliche things like, okay, Dave, easier said than done. Well, I woke up this morning thinking, how could I give you a crash course in stock selection? Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about a few things that you should look for. And obviously, to cover stock selection completely would take a little bit longer. I took 14 hours to cover stock selection in the stock selection course. So it's going to be hard for me to teach stock selection in a few minutes, but this is the point I'm trying to get to. If you come to these weekend chart shows or go in and watch the archives, especially once I started preaching this, I found that everybody, I have found that everyone's stock selection has gotten a lot better. But if you go in and look at some of the older shows, the few little things I preach here today or going to preach here today, a lot of people make those mistakes. So let's talk about that. The first thing is you don't want your stock to look like an electrocardiogram. This was an actual stock I was sent. The stock is all over the place. It's a Jackie Mason stock. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's sideways. So I'm not sure whether they wanted to buy the stock. I think they did or what. But as you can see, the stock is all over the place. You want to ideally look for persistency. And as I've said before, persistency could be somewhat longer term, let's say 20 days or so. But I've also been amazed and through teaching, again, my unfair advantage, I've learned a lot about things that I've discovered, such as persistency. For instance, when I was in Italy, as I've said before, my first trip to Italy, the, sh the trade shows back then were huge. This was right before the market tanked seriously, and there still was a lot of money flying around. And I forget exactly how, I'd say the screen's 30 feet. I'm not sure exactly how big it was, but if you look on my Facebook page or look under Somewhere on my website, I got a picture of me in front of it. I'm tiny and I'm six foot tall, so you could do the math. But it's at least a 20-something foot screen. And I turned around and looked at the screen as I'm pointing something out. And I noticed that over a short period of time, when each one of these bars are two or three feet each, that over a short period of time, persistency is very important too. Now, persistency just means that a stock tends to go up day after day after day after day. Mathematically, it's equivalent to linear regression. But you know me, I just try to keep it simple by drawing a line through as many bars as possible. So persistency is something you want to look for. You want to look for acceleration and not deceleration in a chart. Now, a lot of times you'll see a chart and you'll look at the longer term net net, which we're going to talk about in one second. And you'll say, well, wait a minute, Dave, look at this uh, big blue arrow. I guess in this case is black. This stock has gone up quite a bit. Well, yeah, but it's also lost some momentum and might actually be rolling over. So instead, you want to make sure the stock is accelerating higher and not losing steam. Now, speaking of net-net, is the market higher? Is the market lower? Or is the market pretty much unchanged? By market, it could be anything, okay? It could be stocks, it could be Bitcoin, it could be Forex, whatever you want to trade. Now, does the market tend to stair step higher? Thrust, pull back, thrust, pull back, thrust, pull back, rinse and repeat, okay? If the stock, and I'll use the word stock and market interchangeably, but if the stock has illustrated it has the propensity to go up, pull back, go back, go up, pull back, then maybe it might be able to do it one more time. And hopefully, I know we should never say hope in this business more than just once, as opposed to a stock thrusting, pull back, thrusting, and then pulling back below its last area of thrust. 
Now, if you're looking at something like a base breakout, first pullbacks after a base breakout, or one of my favorite patterns, and I guess I need to watch how I say that because it seems like every pattern is one of my favorite patterns, but it's a pretty good pattern, and there's two ways this happens. One, sometimes it could be at very low levels, and that creates what I call the Phoenix strategy. So this could be two things. One, this is, this is kind of like it could be at a high level. You get a big base, then it takes off. And as I've said before, the bigger the base, the bigger the launch into space. To give credit, I think I thought I was the first person that came up with that. I just, I've just been proofing Linda Rasky's book. And I think she said Akin Poro or somebody else said that long before I did. Now, it could be two ways. One, it could be at high levels, as I've kind of illustrated here. could also be a big, long, long, long-term bottom. And this is what I call a Phoenix strategy. You get a bow tie or a first thrust or something like this, kind of a saucer and handle type of bottom. So you want to see that breakout and subsequent pullback. You don't want that subsequent pullback to come back below the breakout levels. I get asked about, believe it or not, a lot of stocks that had great breakouts but have already come 100% back in. around. They've already round tripped and people are looking to buy. No, let that stock prove itself for looking to take new action. Now, when I talk about trend, and I think these are in the first trend that is, first four videos of Trading Full Circle, which are 100% free, the trend qualifiers are things like gaps and laps and wide range bars in the direction of the trend and you want to avoid stocks that have gaps against the trend now unless it's a commodity related stock which tend to, tends to gap around a little bit and the gap is small no big deal with a commodity related stock or if it's a foreign stock where it trades overnight then it's okay to ignore the gap i'll give you one other caveat if it's a super duper duper volatile stock and let's say the gap is really tiny you have to squint your eyes to see it then maybe that's okay as a general statement especially when it comes to the actual setup itself you want to avoid stocks that have a gap against the setup there's there might be something wrong here okay and as i alluded to a minute ago you want to look for trend qualifiers such as wide range bars and direction of trends strong closes gaps laps and then things such as acceleration persistency etc so avoid those that have, again, gaps against the setup. Now, here's another really biggie. This is probably one of the most common mistakes that I see people make. They look at the chart over here, and it looks fantastic. But if you look back in time, if you look to the left of the chart, and by the way, if you find a broker that lets you trade off the left side of the chart, please let me know. But if you look at the left of the chart, you'll see things like overhead supply. Well, what happens is these little bars in here, this little trading I've illustrated in here, is not some magical little squiggles on the chart. These were people who actually traded that stock or other market at that level. Now, it's human nature to look to get off, off the hook. It's human nature to look to get out of break even. It's human nature to look to get off the hook. So if you buy this stock down here somewhere, let's say you trigger in here, then the most you can get out of that position before it gets into possible trouble will be the move that I have illustrated here at two up toward that trading because again people will look to get off the hook now I realize I've only spent a few minutes on stock selection but if you could do these few things I would be willing to say nine out of ten times I think it's a pretty good estimate people will send me setups potential setups or bring them up in the we could chart, and if I don't like them, I'd be willing to bet nine out of 10 times it's something that I just illustrated to you in this slide, this one little slide. 